Amazon. So Amazon's earnings, I thought were like pretty polarizing from what I saw on Twitter, at least. There's a lot of people like, this was an awful report. People were calling it like a dumpster fire. I actually saw some Amazon bulls like liquidate their entire position saying they're done with the company. And then I saw more people tweeting like, if you're an Amazon shareholder, I'm going to be praying for you right now. And then I went through the report. So what I like to do is I like to go through the report before reading anyone else's opinion. And when I went through Amazon's report, I was like, it's not like amazing, but it wasn't, it wasn't bad. It was just like the company's continuing to execute on what they said. And like, I, I, I don't know. I didn't think it was that bad. Yeah. And are you a shareholder, you? Daniel? Yeah, I have Amazon shares. I have as well. And, you know, the, the stock ran a lot too before earnings. So if you look at the stock change relative to a week or two ago, it's still up. I, I also started a position when it was going under 100. I did not think this was a dumpster fire report. I also didn't get super excited. But yeah, there's a lot yeah. of things going on here. You know, they did layoffs. AWS is an interesting story because it still grew 20%. I actually listened to the earnings call, by the way. So I'd love to talk a little bit about what they said there. Jassy came on for the call. There's really interesting undercurrents going on with their ad spend and stuff. I think it would be super interesting to look at the breakdown of their income streams by revenue because some of their bigger revenue streams stagnated while ones that are smaller are starting to take up more pieces of their pie. And that's what I think not enough people were talking about. Yeah, I agree. So I'm going to just really quickly share Amazon's income statement. And I believe that the the areas of the business that you're talking about are the service sales because the product sales were actually down year over year, but the service sales were up quite significantly. And then also Amazon's total operating income dropped quite significantly year over year. So this is what I mean. Like if you're taking a look at the income statement, the operating income, the net income, it doesn't look good. Like it's, it's down quite a bit, but then what I also find interesting about Amazon is they put their cash flow statement first. So it's almost like Amazon is telling you, Hey, we like to focus on cash flows instead of the income statement, which I agree with. And when you take a look at the cash flow, their cash from operations was up 32% on the fourth quarter year over year. It's flat for the full year, but they're improving cash flows massively, which is exactly what the company said to investors that they were going to do. And I mean, they're doing it like it's right there. And then their CapEx is also down by roughly, I think when I calculated, I think that was like 15%. So they're reducing their CapEx like they said they would. Cash flow, operating cash flow is coming back up. So to me, I was just like, I mean, they're doing literally exactly what they told shareholders they were going to do. Yeah. One thing that's always confusing for me is they run almost at a loss consistently on their sales, so like their marketplace and everything, obviously operating cash flow goes up, but they have to spend so much to make that they almost run it at a loss. I mean, that's been Amazon's growth story, but they're of course, super profitable in AWS. I was just trying to find out how many prime members they ha have right now. And the highest numbers I was seeing was like 200 million. You know, this is a very diversified business. So again, not like a great report, but I want to, I do want to share and point out what I was talking about before, just to look at the different ways this company makes revenue, because I think that there's a larger, more like Amazon macro story going on here. So yeah, just what you were talking about, looking at online stores, physical stores, you can see how much money of revenue they get from those. It's definitely Amazon's cash cow. However, this is what I thought was pretty interesting. So we're seeing across Google and other search-based businesses ad revenue start to top off a bit. In my opinion, that's a very mature economy, mature business of selling ads directly through search. What's interesting is consumers are starting to go more direct to consumer. They're starting to find products through influencers and like short videos and stuff like that. Their advertising services are growing incredibly quickly. I mean, going from almost 20 billion in 2020, getting closer to 40 now in 2022, it's a massive amount of growth. I don't agree with the bears on AWS. They're still the leader. They grew 20% on a huge number. And when I listened to the earnings call, they were speaking directly to AWS growth and management seemed very confident that their, not only their pipeline for new customers was big and that more and more huge businesses were making the switch to the cloud, but they also attributed a little bit less revenue growth to the fact that in the economy we're in, 
companies are optimizing their cloud-based spend. So there was a big push by their existing customers to just optimize what they were already spending. And the last thing again is their subscription services. So these are all smaller pieces of the pie now, but if you are a long-term investor in Amazon, believe that these tailwinds will continue to carry them through more profitability and revenues, these will, in my opinion, continue to go up. And it's just going to be interesting to watch this play out and see what their business is going to look like, you know, two years down the line, what percentage of it will be pure sales versus their subscription services and AWS. Yeah, I agree. So I have a screenshot that I took here as well. I'm going to share this quick. So this is Amazon's different segment growth, which I believe you're just talking about. Um, yeah. So we can see their, their online sales dropped by 2% year over year. Physical stores grew by 6%. But if you take a look at the other areas of their business, like third-party seller services, subscription, advertising services, which you just talked about, and AWS, these areas of the business are growing by 20%, 13%, 19%, 20%. Like these are strong growth rates. And their third-party seller services, for example, is a $36 billion business. Like that's huge. That's more money than I have in my bank account. Yeah, that's actually more than <laughs> AWS generated. So this business is larger than AWS and growing at 20%. And then advertising services, 11.5 billion, growing at 19. So like, I don't know. I think there's a lot more growth drivers that Amazon has right now besides AWS, but the focus is just on AWS. So I think a lot of investors were just caught off guard that AWS's operating income was down year over year and like growth is slowing down quite significantly. So yeah, that like the bears that I was reading, it was mainly AWS that they were upset about. Yeah, I I think people pigeonhole down things a little bit too much there. On the earnings call even, and just to keep adding more ingredients to the Amazon soup that we are creating, <laughs> they said, and I quote, grocery is a significant opportunity. So with everything else going on here, you know, Whole Foods, Amazon is trying to become a massive grocer. Obviously, people always need to buy food. So that was interesting for me to hear them talk about. They are focused on that as well. They had, this is just me reading my notes from the earnings call. They had a record prime and Black Friday. So they broke all their records from consumers buying things. They talked about consumer trends. So they said people were paying lower prices and pinching their wallets a bit on electronics, but they saw that consumers were still spending on essentials, which they labeled as beauty products, shaving products, things like that were still being bought at the same rate. So I thought that was an interesting insight to hear from one of the biggest marketplaces on the world. Uh, high spend on advertising, they focused on that a bit on the call too, that that is becoming a huge, huge business for them. They invested about $7 billion into Prime Video content and stuff, which is interesting to me because they are actually producing real content now. So they talked a lot about how they view returns on investment there and all that growth. So yeah, mixed bag. But that's all I really had on Amazon. Yeah, I didn't think it was awful. I thought it was a fine report. Like I'm holding, I'm not, you know, rushing out the door to buy more shares, but I definitely see it as like a just continue holding my shares that I have right now. <laughs>